Uh, yeah, Nick at Sundance, uh, Kushiaki, Luke, two guys we've never heard of, and Zeal Cole from Bosley's office. He wants to see you. Anyone from Angelus? <laughs> no, not for weeks. All right, tell Zeal I'm on my way and hold everything else. Okay. Ah, there she is. So, Cynthia, do you have that interview with Angela lined up? Nearly. Uh, she's worth a million more sales at the newsstand. Well, I'm working every angle. Just read a hearsay article. Hearsay. Something like, we hear Angela's going to India, and we hear she's insured her breast for $50 million. I don't do that. Really? Why not? Because it isn't true. So, later we print a retraction. In the meantime, we sell a ton of magazines, which is what we're here for. How long do you think celebrities are going to allow us to profile them if we're lying about them? Aaron, would you give us a minute, please? Oh, Cynthia, Cynthia, Cynthia. I am going to be honest with you. How long have you been here with us at Celeb Magazine? Hmm? Well, I'll be celebrating my 10-year anniversary at the end of the week. It's a different game now. The stakes are higher. We have to sell more copies, do whatever it takes. And I'm just not sure you're up to it. Well, be sure, because I am. Last night, what did you do? Last night. I was invited to an art gallery opening at the Meckler. What A-list celebrities were there? Well, there was... Kirk and Elizabeth. So, no A-listers. You see, that's just my point. You're not getting invitations to the big stuff. Now, Erin, on the other hand, she got invited to the opening of Brad's new film as his personal guest. I've gotten you more interviews than anybody on the staff. When was the last time you wrote a cover story? Four months ago, George. Four months as a lifetime. Erin had this month's cover and the last two. Look, I... The fact is, I don't want to let you go. I really don't. But I do think you need a breather. And that is why you are going to work for great housekeeping. Great housekeeping? It is a fine publication, a magazine that I publish along with all the others. Of course, there is a fast track back to the big leagues, back to Celeb. Get the interview with Angela. Look, Andrew, I think I can convince Bosley to make a very sizable contribution to Angela's favorite charity. Well, let's just say here. Because we here at Celeb Magazine believe that saving the vampire fly is an extremely worthy cause, as does Angela. Promise me you'll think about it. Okay, thanks. Okay, plane tickets to Chicago. Rental car reservation. Maps to Slow Creek, Illinois. It wasn't Indiana. <laughs> uh, you will uh, be staying at the Slow Creek Inn, and I put everything on your black Right, it's anybody from Angela Ashton's team calls, and I mean anyone. Her dog barker, her herbalist, anyone. Reach me immediately. Immediately, understand? I understood you the first time. Nice. You tell for business? I'm just looking for the slow creek Can you tell me where it is? See the sign right there? Pretty much right in front of your face, so to speak. Oh. You're welcome. I'm sorry. Thank you. No problem. It's nice to meet me, I'm sure. I can't Goodness, I, I, are you checking in? Yes, I, I am. Oh my goodness, you must be. <laughs> you must be Cynthia Tamerlane. Line. Tamerlane, you're right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, everybody calls me Big Jim. I'm the owner, proprietor, and and uh, bellman of the <laughs> Slow Creek Inn. Welcome. Well, will you be staying with us long? Ah, uh, just overnight. Oh well, that's too bad. Maybe next time you can stay longer. Right, sure. Would you like to register, please? There we go. And I've got you up on the second floor. <laughs> there we go. Now, if you'll follow me. There we are. That's a nice little room. Nothing fancy. 
just comfortable. Just like the folks around here. Now you'll find a bathroom right through there. Oh, and you'll get a nice view here of the wishing well. That's what I'm here to do a story on. Oh, my goodness, and that's wonderful. Hmm. You know, we used to have a lot of tourists come around here. And uh, the first thing you know, a few people didn't get their wish. So everybody started saying, well, the wishing well doesn't work. But around here, people still believe. <laughs> well, what about you? Do you ever wish for anything? Oh, me? <laughs> no, I'm one of the lucky ones. I just go along. I'm happy with everything. Maybe you'd like to make a wish. Oh, no, no. I'm one of the lucky ones, too. I have a life that most women would only dream about. Well, now you are lucky. By golly. <laughs> well, if you need anything, please let me know. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. doing a story on the wishing well oh, well that's nice what for it's for celeb magazine oh wait you don't know it well i've seen it it's just that the wishing room doesn't seem like a celeb kind of thing well it's actually for the sister publication called um great great House. House. you write for great housekeeping <laughs> oh my god you know my cousin had a terrible time with depression like he had his dark cloud over his head all the time and they tried all those pills with the x's and the z's and their names and nothing worked he went to the wishing well one day, threw in about 85 cents. Since then, he has been the happiest person you ever saw. And you think it was the wishing well? What else? Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. I mean, it doesn't work automatically. You have to have the right wish. Fact is, the well hasn't worked in quite some time that I know of. Oh? But if I were you, I'd start over with the newspaper. They've been doing stories on the wishing well for years. Here's your cap, And here's your old lady. So, I got him to buy a half page at the quarter page rate for one month, and then it's going to adjust. He didn't want to do it, you know, but you can't really tell me no. <laughs> I think it's really going to bring in some really great revenue. Excuse me. Oh, can I help you? Yes, I'm here to do a story on the wishing well for Celeb Magazine, and I was wondering... What does Celeb Magazine want to do a story on the wishing well for? Well, it's for our sister publication, Great Housekeeping. And... Really? Oh, I love Great Housekeeping. That magazine is amazing. Do you know what you can do with just a little bit of bacon stuff? Anyhow, I was wondering if I could get into your archives. Well, I'd have to clear it with my boss first. Perfect. Could you do that quickly? <sighs> Mark? We got a question out here. Yep. Oh, hi. Oh, nice to meet me again, I'm sure. What's the question? I'm doing a story on the wishing well. She works for Great Housekeeping. I was wondering if I could look at your archives. You do have archives. Of course. Feel free to look through them all you want. Professional courtesy. One journalist or the other. Thank you. Uh, most of the stories over the last ten years are probably going to be in our master files. Can she use that desk unit? It's okay with me. Anything older than that is probably going to be in the stacks of the warehouse. Where's that? I'd like to ask for directions, don't you? Uh, it's just a nice little walk up Main Street. The keys are in the back wall over here. Just go out the front door, take a right, go up a couple blocks, and you can't miss it. I think I'll start with the computer files. Well, is there any particular angle you're looking for? I could probably save you some time. <laughs> I'll know it when I see it. I'm a writer. It's just kind of the way I work. I should probably get started. Let's 
Let's go with the Alex Jacobs 99 birthday for the leader. Excuse me. I think I need to have a look at the warehouse. Alright, can I find your angle? Not yet. Well, the paper's over 100 years old. I'm sure if you look, you'll find something. You know, maybe a famous person has come to town. Something like that. At the door then to the right? The door to the right. Can't miss it. She's got a real case of anemia. She's all right. She just can't see what's as plain as day. I say famous person. She comes to get a key and misses a picture of the most famous person that's ever come to Smoke Creek right in front of her face. Good afternoon. Hello. You in town? Yes, I am. I'm just in town doing a story on the wishing well. There must be quite a few people come this way to look at the well and make a wish. A lot of newspaper reporters over the years. But it doesn't work for everyone. Not so popular anymore. Do you believe? I certainly do. Anything you want starts by believing it can happen. Especially a wish. As long as it's the right one. <laughs> well, thank you. Goodbye. your misery, but I have to go. Oh, great. Leave me here to suffer. Perfect. Uh, let's see you at Napoleon. You want to teach him some manners? Yeah, it's the closest thing we can afford to an alarm. Oh, meaning you can turn him off. You must be glad you're not a rat. <laughs> Believe me, I couldn't be happier about that. I'll just come out here and see if you need some help. No, thanks. I'm fine. I rarely make it out here anyway, as you can tell. Excuse me. Ugh. You know, I'm the fourth generation of my family to own the Chronicle. My great-grandfather started it in 1887. It's been the one constant in Slow Creek all these years. This is a little up in town, but... We like it. The people here depend on the paper. It's this place an identity, some history. All these stories are all these years. I'm proud of it. Well, I will leave you and Napoleon to it. Thank you. I mean, you could have saved me a lot of dirt, trouble, cobwebs, and frankly, bird poop. Well, the picture of Reagan is right there by the keys if you'd actually looked. I asked if you wanted help, and you said no, so don't blame me for seeing what's very clear to anyone that meets you. Which is? You can't see something right from your own face. Uh, I don't remember asking for a lecture on journalism or anything else. Well, you asked me why I didn't tell you, and I gave you an answer. You're welcome. 
that? Yes, Annie. I've got four things that happen in history for tomorrow's paper. Do I need more? How about one more good one? Oh, hi. Hi. Are you staying? No, I'm not. I'll be leaving your town as soon as I send my story. Oh, well, back to the grind. Huh? We met at the wishing room. that you have to believe. I do. Do you think it's broken? I don't know. Guess I'll try again. Maybe your wish shouldn't be a secret. You think? Maybe you should tell somebody. I could tell you. I guess if you're leaving. It'd still be kind of a secret. Yeah. I'm wishing for my dad to be happy. Oh. I should have told you. No, no, I'm, I'm glad you did. It's just, your dad didn't seem unhappy when I saw him. I know. He does that for me. Because he doesn't want me to see him sad. I know, because we don't like to talk about it. Well, I have an idea. I make a wish, and then at the same time you make a wish, we'll see if we can get this old wishing well to work again. Okay, but you have to use your own wish. Oh, okay. Mm. You got a quarter? Yeah. <laughs> I wish I knew how to be happy. Abby? Uh-oh. What? Abby? The dad doesn't really like me hanging around making wishes here. It's just a waste of time. Uh-oh. You're still here? Well, I couldn't leave town without making a final wish in the famous wishing well. Abby was kind enough to show me how it worked. It's all in the rest. <laughs> yeah, well, let's let Miss Timberline get going. I'm sure she's got a plan to catch back to New York. Come back and visit us, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Could you call me immediately? These are my clues. Oh, just a moment. 
this. No, no, there's been a mistake. But that is your signature, isn't it? Look, Mr. Big Jim, I'm a journalist, and I'm going to find out what's going on. Believe me, I will get to the bottom of it. Right now, I've got a copy of it right here in the files. Absolutely. Excuse me, you're Cynthia Tamerlan. Yeah, that's right. She's here! Oh, and we wondered where you were. Look, please, try to be here by 7, 7.30. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, you're supposed to start working here today. We come in at 7.30. Me? Work here? Yes, you. Here. Work. No, 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 there's been a mistake. I'm here to do a story for Celeb Magazine. I mean, great housekeeping. And Ooh. Now, I love great housekeeping. I love that magazine. Do you know if you put a raw egg in when you first plant a tomato, they grow better? Uh, no, Miss Tamerline, I hired you to fill in as a reporter. No. We talked on the phone. You're from Nebraska. Okay, there's something really crazy going on here. Really crazy. Maybe we should just get started. Chronicle. Yes, uh, hold on one minute. It's Mr. Upshaw from the Vernon Newspaper Syndicate again. You want to talk to him? I do not. Yes, Mr. Upshaw, he's in the bathroom. Yes, I'm sure he will call you back as soon as he's available. But, you know, he took a magazine in there with him. Yeah, it can be. Hey, look, here's your first assignment if you're ready. No, I, I'm not ready. I'm here to do a story on the wishing well. We don't need another story on the wishing well. We've done hundreds of them over the years. This is a good story. It's Martin Six Memorial Service. It's tomorrow morning. Okay, you hire her. But you did say you're going to work for the Chronicle tomorrow. I said that yesterday. Yes, you said you were staying at the inn for a little while, and then you start working today. Are you okay? Of course, I'm, I'm fine. Well, okay, but if you ever need to talk, I'm here pretty much all the time. Would you like to start a tab? Oh, what? Start a tab. See, most people, they pay at the end of the month. It saves time and all those pesky individuals. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Well, I got the best food in town. I'm sure that's true, but I, I don't plan on staying very long. I'll just be as I go. Well, that's fine, too. In fact, just the copies. Whenever you're ready. <clears throat> there you go, hon. Thank you. You're welcome. Steve, huh? Let me get you guys some coffee. Uh, Donette? Yes, honey. I think 
Let's rip that towel. Well, that's fine, too. Hey, John. Bing. Miss Caroline? Yes. You got a minute? Uh, I, I called over at the newspaper office, and you weren't there, so I kind of figured you'd be here. <laughs> okay, so you found me. Oh, well, I thought you'd like to know that um, uh, the check that you gave me yesterday, uh, the bank just called and said that it was insufficient funds. Wait, what check? The check for the first week's rent on the room. I, I, I didn't write a check. And if I had written a check, it wouldn't have bounced. Do you, do you know how much money I make? I, I work for Celeb Magazine. Uh, I, I don't have money problems, okay? Uh, uh, please, I don't mean to upset you. I, I'm sure it must be a misunderstanding. It must be. So, but, uh, listen, I can, I can float you for a while. Float me. Well, you know, you're brand new here in town, and, and uh, Mark did vouch for you. Oh, Mark vouched for me. Huh? Yes. So you're going to work for him today. <laughs> That's good, huh? There you go. Nothing to worry about. I'll see you later. <laughs> John? Hey. I'll pick up some of the slack. It's my fault that we're shorthanded. School board appointment piece is ready. We're going to the meteor shower story. It'll be ready tomorrow. Great. We'll pencil it in for the meteor on Friday. It's going to be beautiful. I guess there's been some confusion. Can I see you for a moment? You're seeing me now. In your office. To be continued. You're ready to work because confusion is not on the calendar and we could really do some help around here. Yes, but I was wondering if you might reiterate my salary considerations. New reporter standard. It, it's what we talk about on the phone. Yeah, but it's so... You come to my office this morning, you talk a bunch of gibberish, and then you leave. And then you come back. And in the meantime, Big Jim comes here and he asks if you're working for the paper, and I tell him you are, which I really don't understand why I did. But the question remains, you want the job or not? Do you remember meeting me yesterday? Because people in this town depend on this paper, and what we need are dependable people to work for it. I asked you for direction. And around here, we all do everything. We answer the phone, we do the reporting, we compose the layouts, we also sell ad space. I use the archives. We have a lot of work to do, and we really don't have any time to waste. I went to the warehouse. Going once. Going twice. Yes. Yes, I want the job. Good. I think. Like I said, your first assignment is Martin's sixth funeral. It's tomorrow morning. Can I just stop and think how lucky we are? Lucky. Oh, I'm home. I can't believe it. I'm home. Oh, a nightmare. Had airline food and lack of sleep. Emery's was here. Of course I'm home. Thank goodness. This doesn't make any sense. No sense at all. Tyson works for me. He's my friend. Wait, is he? Is he really my friend? Are any of them really my friends? I mean, do they look out for what's best for me? Is this really my home? What is this? This is not me. This is not my friend. who knew him, perhaps Harry Williams, knew him the best. So you would like to say a few words before we convey Mr. Martin Sixth to do his final resting place. Mary. Thank you. My father first met Martin Sixth a few years after the Korean War. They didn't know it at the time, but both had been wounded at the Battle of Port Chop Hill. In fact, they both almost died there. Dad said that when he and Martin finally did meet, Martin told him he had no family, and no money, and no place to live. And all Martin wanted was to be able to stay in our shed out back, just for a while till he got back on his feet. And Dad said he could, but there wasn't much out there. No hot water, just a hose bib, and a bare bulb hanging down. And Martin said, that's okay, because I don't need very much. So they made a deal. 
and he shook on it. Martin would pay $12 a month for as long as he wanted to stay there. Growing up, I remember, we didn't see very much of Martin. He kept to himself, mostly. Then later, of course, I got married and moved out and started a family of my own. Then after Dad died in 93 and Mom followed in 98, we rented out the main house. But what do you know? Martin Sixth was still living in the shed out back. Still paying $12 on the first of each month. He never missed. Not once. He and my father had made a deal, and they both lived up to it. Well, naturally, I felt that it was my job to continue to honor that deal. So now Martin is gone. The sad thing is, I don't know much more about him than what I've already told you. In fact, most of the town hardly even knew he existed. I do know that he did some woodworking for people, and they were happy with that. And he paid his rent on time like he said he would. Because Martin Sixth was a man of his word. And that counts for something. I thought the least I could do was give him a decent burial. Right, Dad? He's smiling. There you have it. That was Martin Sixth. We're going to take the casket out now. short the pallbearer today. We were wondering if you could oblige us. Me? But I didn't even... Thank you. You're not going out to the cemetery, are you, Mary? No. No, I got a doctor's appointment. Well, we all have to meet our maker by ourselves. I'll say a prayer for you Sunday, Martin. That's very kind of you, Reverend. Please forgive me. Abby, right? Yes. Have we met before? Don't you remember the wishing... Oh. No, we've never met. You're right. Oh. Okay. Well, I'm Abby. My dad owns the paper. It's nice to meet you, Abby. My dad owns the paper. He's on assignment right now. Oh. I'm working on my disdain history column. Looks great. Thanks. I'm going to go back to my desk. Okay. Everything okay, honey? Very good. Uh, and I'd like a glass of Pinot Noir. Me too, but oh, I got plain red. Well, that'll do. Well, I'll just bring it right over. Room at the end, comfy? It's fine. Big Jim is my ex. I always like to make sure he's doing a good job. No complaints. Really? Well, I had plenty. <laughs> you have a problem. You just let me know, because he's got anything to shut me up. Well, tell. May I? Of course. I want to talk to you about the article. On Martin's funeral. Yes. What about it? Simple truth. It's not all there. What? Well, you miss the essence of what this is all about. Um, are you giving me writing tips? Do you know the cover stories I've written? I'm sorry. It's not about your writing style. That's fine. It's about substance. That's what you're missing. Okay. Look, Martin Six's life was no less valuable than anybody else's. Sure, he was private and he was quiet, but he had honor and dignity. Right. Well, he wasn't famous, but there was something about his life that was good, and we can all benefit from it. He kept his word. I understand. Right, well, get the rewrite done as soon as possible. I'm saving room on page two. Tomorrow's edition. Okay, definitely. Look, um, I'm not normally so hard on people that I work with, but you're good. You could just be better. The office will be open all evening. Mark, your food's ready. Thank you, Donette. Hello, Chronicle. Mr. 
Upshaw from the Vernon Newspaper Syndicate? No, no, he's not here right now. You're right, he does stay and work late sometimes. Uh, hang on, let me get a pen. Okay. You want me to tell him that the offer won't be on the table forever, and that if he's smart, he'll take it. Oh, don't write that. Oh, he should just know that. Okay. I'll give him the message. Thank you. She'd rather be here with me than with the babysitter all the time. We lost her mother when she was two. I think she missed as much as never had. I'm sorry. It's okay. We have a good time. She likes it. It's kind of like camping out, except... Except she's not camping and she's not out. Exactly. Well, we'll go home as soon as I get this paper put to bed. I think it's nice. I do too. barking dog and a dog who was howling and another barking dog that turned out to be the same barking dog as the first dog. That's three incidents. Got it? We got a call from Mrs. Mullins that Mr. Mullins was staying too long at CJ's bar and she wanted him to come home. So she called you? It's my auntie. My uncle wasn't answering his cell phone. But I'd rather you not print that. Big Jim doesn't know. It's our secret. Thanks. Well, see you next time. this morning on Martin 6th. I'd like to pay you a compliment. It was beautiful. And so true. My article. You really captured him. Martin would have been very appreciative. He loves the Chronicle. He used to read it every day from cover to cover. Well, most people in this town do. Anyway, thank you. Thank, thank you.
bitch, it's me. Why aren't you taking my calls? I really need to talk to you. Can you please call me back as soon as you can? It's very important that I talk to you, okay? Bye. Making a wish? I keep wishing. But I wonder if it's ever gonna happen. Are you sad? Yeah, I guess I am. I understand. My dad is sad too. Why is he sad? Because my mommy died. I know, I'm sorry. Sometimes at night, I'll hear something. And he goes, what it is. And it's daddy and he's crying. And I don't know what to do. I mean, I'll help him as much as I can at the paper. He works so hard. I'm sure he appreciates all your help. Yeah, but it's not enough. No, it's not. And that makes me sad. Everybody gets sad. You know what I do when I get sad? What? I treat myself to a makeover. And I'm thinking, both you and I deserve a makeover. Really? Yeah. Yes, really. Come on. Uh, like I said, Mike, I'd like to help. But those funds are committed for city services. Well, the paper's important to the city also. Hey, no argument there, my friend. Hey, Dad. Cindy's gonna give me a makeover so we won't be sad anymore. Just a little fun. Okay, have a good time. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> You got a cutie there, boy. Just like your mom. Well, make that champ. Let's see it. <laughs> that tickles. <laughs> we'll wait until you get older. You need to start plucking your eyebrows. That is not so funny. Did you tear out your eyebrow hair? That's right. Doesn't it hurt? Well, sometimes beauty means sacrifice. Well, I'm going to let mine go. And come there really nicely. <laughs> <laughs> that could work. You could even braid them. And turn it into a fashion trend. <laughs> That's silly. <laughs> it's silly. It's just what it's like to have a mommy. Well, yeah. Yeah, someone to have fun with and learn things from and go shopping with. I mean, I still do all those things with my mom. That sounds nice. Well, you still have your mom? You're lucky. Come in. Wow. Don't you look beautiful? She's a natural beauty. Yeah, I'm a natural beauty. <laughs> well, my natural beauty. Why don't we get out of Cynthia's room so she can get some rest? Okay. What do you say? Thanks, Cynthia. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. See you tomorrow? Yes. Good night. Good night. Mark. I... I was wondering if you wanted me to write another story. Uh, yeah, actually, I was thinking about doing something on Kenny James' lighter collection. Lighter collection? Yeah, he's this guy who has a bunch of cigarette lighters. Right, right, okay. I want you to know that I'm really glad they put this. You did a lot of really great work. You think? Absolutely. Then why all the blue line notes? I hope you'll be as great as I know you can be. And you'll be happy. Good night. Good night. Let's go, Kill. They used to give away with cigarettes called Blue Devils to soldiers going to the war in the early 1940s. That's interesting. What's your most valuable one? Guy offered me $2,000 for it. Why did you take it? Well, that's just money. I've spent my whole life accumulating these. Of course. Sometimes I play a little game and I try to see how many I can light in like 30 seconds. I bet that's fun. 21 would be a new record. I'm thinking about going for it. Then I'd be famous. Good night. You got the keys? Yes. Quite a collection. Yeah, he's a bit eccentric. <laughs> That's putting him mildly. Hey, you want to hear something weird about Kenny? There's more? He doesn't smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Cynthia, I need you to get to Kenny James' house. At Kenny James' house? Yeah, I'll meet you there. 
Thanks. Huh? Hey, great article. You're turning out to be a first-rate writer. Well, thanks. It was mostly Mark. All right, got your next assignment. City council meeting at noon. Kenny. Kenny. Are you all right? Sure. I want to thank you for what you wrote about me. It was special. I don't have my collection or my house anymore, but I got your article. Things will get better. <laughs> well, they got you. They, they can't get much worse. So my recommendation is that we vote for a new levy for the reservoir. John? Me. Now, this levy was built in 1927 by our predecessors. So I think we owe it to the future generations of Slow Creek that they receive good water and plenty of it. So I vote that we get funds for it. I second the motion. Ah, uh -huh. so now let's call the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, the motion is passed. All right. Now, do we have any, uh, any new business? May I ask a question? Well, go ahead. Kimi lost everything in the fire. His lighter collection, his house, everything. And I was just wondering... If there was something we could do to help him. Kini was an idiot. He was always an idiot. That's true, Nelbert. But he's our idiot. And now he's lost everything. What is wrong with you, Nelbert? You know the Connolly House, Big Jim? The town owns that, right? Well, what's on your mind, little Jim? I say we lease it to him cheap and he fixes it up. Well, now, do I hear a motion to that effect? May I? You may. <laughs> Chronicle. <laughs> yes, the meteor shower is tonight. It's going to be on full display in the southern sky. I thought you said the loan would be approved. No, I don't have any more collateral. No, I don't understand. Look, I need you to understand that I don't know how to make this paper run without it. Hi. Hi. The city council meeting? Yes. Anything good? Uh, they voted to let Kenny have the old economy place. Oh, I bet your uncle helped. Maybe. I hope so. Thank you. So what's my next assignment? Uh, look, why don't you take a break? Go to Dunnett's, have a coffee. I'll let you know. Okay. Tonight? Where? The meteor shower. 
Most people are going to see it from Grover's view because he's got the clearest view in the South. Well, I hadn't planned on it. Oh, you have to. It's going to be so beautiful. And there hasn't been one here since 1935. Oh, I don't know. Well, you're going with me. And I don't take no for an answer. You'll love it. And, and Mark is sure to be there. What does that have to do with anything? Oh, nothing. Except everything. Unless I'm wrong, which I'm not ever. He's kind of... <sighs> He's a very good person. Oh, good person. <laughs> Well, I like that. That's funny. What? Same thing he said about you. <laughs> it's gonna start right up there. No, no, it's that way. Right up there, buddy. Right up there. That's where they're coming. No, no, the weatherman said south of town. What south of town? Are you kidding? No, he said south of south, south of town. This is where it's gonna be, my boy. Right there. It's like a terminal. Well, sure. People see a big thing like this, it reminds them of how large the heavens are and how little time we have on this earth to do what we're supposed to do. What are we supposed to do? Make the most of what we are and welcome love when we find it and be happy. How's that all? <laughs> Honey, that's not only all, that's the oh, my guys, I see you like the mayor. Oh, well, that's what happens when you were married to the mayor for a while. A lot of people owe you money for food. Hey, the next. Oh, you have Cynthia here. Sure did. Hi. This is Cynthia Tamron. She wrote that article on Kenny for the uh, Chronicle. You really got Kenny down. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you have a nice evening now. You too, Melba. You know I really got to get the credit to Mark. He's a phenomenal editor. He's also made me a better writer. Well, he thinks you're naturally talented. Oh. You know, the funny thing is, I've always wanted to be a great writer. Since I started out with the magazine, I, I never stopped to say, what am I writing? What could I be? What do I want? Well, honey, you know, I can't think of a single person that can change the past, but the future, that's still up here. Hi, Annie. Hi, Annie. Can't you sit with us? Oh, I don't know. Oh, go ahead. I gotta sit with Big Jim and the family. Well, they owe me more than anybody in this town. And this is my opportunity to connect. <laughs> <laughs> that's my daddy. I found her. Hey, glad you can make it. You can have my seat. I've got this one. Hey, baby. Thanks. Everybody's talking about the whole Kenny thing. I'm just glad everything's going to work out for him. Yeah, well, it wouldn't have happened if it were for you. You had a lot to do with it, too. Mm -hmm. My point is that uh, I really want you to remember this. No matter what happens. But you're a really good writer. That's just right. You could pretty much go anywhere you wanted to do well. Sounds ominous. No. I should probably tell you this because you are going to be affected by it. What? Tomorrow, um, a man named Mr. Upshaw is coming to town by the Chronicle. He owns Vernon newspapers. It's a syndicate of smaller papers that he's bought up, usually because they were struggling. That's who's been calling? He's been after me for a while. Are you going to sell? Yeah, it depends reality. It's not like the Chronicle's a money-making operation. On a good year, we break even. And we haven't had a good year for a while. It's too bad. You know, stories like Keeney's that make this even worse. I don't understand. Upshaw's operation, it, it puts out a generic paper. There's almost no local news. I mean, they buy national and international stories and just repackage them. And the strength of the Chronicle and papers like it is that they're the fabric of the town. And you give a place like Slow Creek an identity. It's exactly why my great-grandfather started it in the first place. I figure that they'll probably just make it a one-person office. Enid, most likely. She'll be there to keep the doors open. You're not going to be there? It's not the kind of place it will be. But you love that paper. I do. But now I'll be able to pay off a whole slew of debts. I'll be able to have some insurance for her future. You know, what's funny is that when I was younger, I hated the paper. So I got out of town, went to Chicago, got on staff at the Herald, and I did pretty well. I got promoted to the city desk. I was in line for a department editor. Really? And then I suddenly found myself as a single parent. So we came back home. I took over the paper for my dad. At first, it was really hard. Eventually, I started to love it. You're doing a really good job. Look at this. Oh, so it's starting.
Maybe you like it or something. I'd love to. <laughs> Done a really great job with Abby. She's a wonderful girl. Thanks. We have our mom that's fast. She's turned out pretty good. Done most of it on her own. Lucky for me. Well, still, it had to be really hard. Times. I'm really sorry for your job at the newspaper. You don't have to apologize. Like you said, I could get a job anywhere else. Am I selling out? I think you're doing what you have to do. I just feel like I'm betraying my dad and his dad. And I just seem wrong. You know, you could always try to wish it well. I wish I believed in it. Well, that is one of the rules. Believing. Was that so? Yeah. And also, having the right wish. Well, how do you know it's the right wish? <laughs> When it comes true. I believe Abby has gotten to you. She has. And so have you. This whole place. Hey, thanks again. It's my pleasure. And believe me. It's been a very long time since I've said that to anyone. Well, maybe I shouldn't believe in miracles. I never thought I'd want to kiss a woman like that again. What's funny? No, it's just the thing is, the guy wants it to be. I couldn't see what was in front of my face. Maybe now I can. Better. <laughs> okay, well, I'm on. I'm gonna go get Abby. Yeah. And you are? Enid. Enid. <laughs> well, who is this? This is Cynthia. Cynthia. Oh. Mr. Jones? Is right. Mark's in his office. Oh. Mark! They're here. Hi, Mark Jensen. Yes, of course. Well, shall we go to my office? Yes. Well, this shouldn't take long. We've gone up all the papers. I never thought I'd see the day. Mark said he thought they'd keep the exterior in the office. <gasps> Fat chance! If he goes, I go. Let them find their own idiot to do whatever it is they do and call it a Enid. newspaper. What? Enid, I need to talk to Mark. He's busy. Hi. Hi, Abby. Well, I really need to talk to him right away. Look, Mary, if this is some complaint about the newspaper, you can just say it. No, it's not a complaint. This newspaper is about to have a new owner in a matter of minutes. Well, then he's really going to want to talk to me. Mary, what's happened? As you can see, we made it very simple for you. Well, you've made it simple for yourself, let's be honest. 
I'm not here to force you. You call me, remember? says it, as if I don't call her three times a week. No, I... I'm just feeling relieved. <sighs> I don't know. All right. Coffee in the morning? You know, I have to be into the office early. That Angela interview came through. You're kidding. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, make sure Bosley pays for sending you to the boonies. Okay. Wait, Rachel, why didn't you call me back? When? When I left you all those messages. You didn't leave any messages, and I always call you back. All right, call me after the interview. Thank God you're back from Indiana. Illinois. There's the Met opening for the Impressionist Collection. That's Thursday. Bobby's show is Friday. Tyson. What? Have I been okay? Okay? No, you've been in Illinois. Oh, by the way, Angela's people have called twice to confirm you really did it. All right. So, who do you want first? Just give me a minute, okay? I understand. It's your big day. You want to get yourself ready. Take your time. I mean, I would if I needed it, which I don't. So, uh, I will hold everything, and you can prep. Go ahead. I'm telling you, it's going to be huge. Oh, here's my star report on that. Yeah, I'll get right back to you. Ah, she is... Oh, you look fantastic. Mm. Thanks. So, are you ready? What happened to... I think you know Stool Edge. What are you talking about? You sent me to Slow Creek, Illinois. The wishing well? Well, okay, so maybe I was trying to shake you up a little bit. So you wrote an article for Great Housekeeping. Hey, well, by the way, did I tell you? I think it was a work of genius. All right, so what is this? This is like a, a kind of gotcha kind of thing, right? Now look, you did the Indiana thing. Let's just forget it ever happened. Illinois. Oh, Illinois, Indiana. What's the dip? 
you really want to get going, you know, you should be on your way to the Red Smith and the back into you. I'm pretty sure Sean have already set up the cover shot by now. What, what, what is it, you, uh, kissing my arm? Hmm? Blackmail? Right, fine, no problem. You've got it. What? Well, the, uh, a raise. Promotion to editor, whatever you want. Look, you got the interview. It has to be the most impossible interview to get in the world, so you deserve it. And if I don't give it to you, some other rag's gonna sneak in and steal you away, so... Editor? Yeah, well, I am the owner and publisher, so editor is about as far as I can go. Look, uh, but you really ought to be going, and there's not one to wait, and we really need those million extra sales. Editor. Yes, editor. Look, I'll double your expense account, but that's it. I've given you everything I can except my plot. Now, uh, please, go. Have you ever been to Illinois?